Welcome to our lecture online. Most of us by now should know what a derivative is, but it's always a good idea to take another look at it in a slightly different way. So here's a simple function. It's a scalar function, x squared plus 2x plus 1. We have the vertex right here at negative 1 and 0. And what do we mean when we say the derivative of that scalar function? Of course, we're doing this in preparation when we're going to look at the del operator and how it operates on vector functions so we can see the relationship. Well, here we have the expression df dx. That means the change in f with respect to a change in x. And it essentially says how fast a function is changing. So that's, by definition, the derivative of that function. It can also be considered the slope of the equivalent graph on the xy plane. So when we take the derivative of our function, we get 2x plus 2. Essentially, it's the rate of change of the function for any value of x. Whatever value you plug in for x, you're going to get a rate of change of that function at that value for x. So that means for different places on the curve right here, we're going to get a different slope. The slope is negative here, the slope is positive there, and it's zero down here at the vertex. So when we take a look and say for x equals negative 1, what is the slope? What is the derivative? Well, at negative 1, we see the slope is equal to 0. And at x equals 1, well, all we have to do is plug in a 1 here. We get 2 plus 2 is 4. We see that the slope is equal to 4. In other words, the derivative of that function is equal to 4. We can also take the derivative expression and write it like this. Now, you see that df can be written as equal to df dx times dx. Notice when we multiply this out, the dx's cancel out and we have df equals df, so we know that's correct. But now, notice that on this side, this is the small change in f, of course, as uh, delta x goes to zero, there's a small change in x. But we can take a look at it, it doesn't have to be a change that goes all the way to zero. I know by definition it is, but we can simply look at it. A small change in x will cause a small change in f, depending upon this factor right here. This factor here, df dx, is the rate of change of the function, or the derivative. So we multiply the derivative times a small change in x, we get a small change in the function. Of course, that depends upon what value of x we want to consider. For x is equal to negative 1, let's plug in a small change for x, dx be 0.1, what is our df? So we can use this equation that we have over here, we plug in, df dx, which of course we know is equal to 0 for x equals negative 1, multiply times 0.1, we get a small change in the function, which is also 0. But in other words, if we're down here, we make a small change in x, that will cause a 0 change in the function. But then if we want to go to a different point for x is equal to 1, which is up here somewhere, we can see the slope is quite large. We notice that the slope we calculated is equal to 4. And then if we want to make a small change in x for x equals 1, what is the change in the function? Again, we have the rate of change of the function times the x will give us a change in the function itself. So we take the 4 for the change in the function or the slope of the function times the change in x gives us 0.4, which means that a small change in x, 0.1, will cause a small change in the function, 0.4. And that is essentially what we mean by the derivative of a function. Now we're going to apply that concept to the del operator when it operates on vector functions, and you'll see how that then changes things, but also we'll see the similarity to this concept, and that is how it's done. First take.